we've got everyone in. Um, so we will just get started. All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us for this sort of early morning press conference. Um, today, we're here to hear from the commissioner, uh, Commissioner Joanne Hardesty, about Rethink Portland, her newly launched community safety initiative. So just a super brief agenda before I hand it off to the commissioner. Um, I am going to offer some brief guidelines about the Q&A process. Um, and uh, we'll have the commissioner do her opening remarks and then we'll open the floor for questions. We'll take the last question sometime between 9.20 to 9.25, uh, depending on how long the question takes, so that the commissioner can offer any last remarks and make it to council on time, which starts at 9.30. Um, so before I get started, I just wanna go over some brief guidelines. Um, I'm sure most of you are aware of them by now with so many press conferences on Zoom, but um, please remain on mute until you're called for a question. Um, and please hold the Hold your questions until the floor is open. When the floor is open for questions, use the chat box to, um, you can either put Q or just say you have a question and I will call on you in order of when I get those questions. Um, and when I just, when you're unmuted, just please be sure to include your name and media affiliation when you ask your question. And um, we will try to make sure every member of the media gets at least one question in before we get to your second question. Um, unless you have a clarifying question, then that's totally fine. So um, as I said, we'll end promptly um, right before 9.30 so that, count, that the commissioner can get to council on time. And with that, I'm gonna hand it over to the commissioner. Thank you, Lockie. Uh, and thank you all so much for coming this morning. I know it's early. <laughs> Even for me, it's a little early for a press conference. Um, thank you. Uh, we're here today to talk about the launch of a new initiative from my office called Rethink Portland. It's an opportunity to channel all the energy for justice, accountability, and change into a tangible action. Um, it's a way to spark conversation and for me to hear directly from Portlanders, uh, from a collective voice and a collective vision of what makes communities safe and how do we make the city of Portland a safe community for all? Um, in addition, uh, there is a website called rethinkportland.com that we've launched, and it has the events, the community town halls, and other ways for community members to give us direct feedback um, or to take action. Um, I'm launching the Answer is the Problem campaign um, in conjunction with this to get Portland's really talking about this topic. Through scenarios that are all too familiar to every Portlander, this campaign powerfully illustrates how our current options are inadequate to meet the range of community safety needs in our city. Armed police officers should not be the only solution. The problem is that our system is built so that only our answer, so they're only our answer for so many of our community problems. Armed officers do not solve economic crises. They cannot make up for decades of disinvestment in our communities, especially black and um, indigenous and other communities of color. Um, armed officers do not solve our housing crisis and they cannot replace a robust mental health system. Um, uh, in addition, for too long, um, we have, a, for too long, please have been, uh, 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 the system leaves us currently disproportionately targeting uh, communities of color um, and people experiencing mental health crisis. We just heard last week from the OIR group uh, that we continue to use uh, force against people suffering from mental health issues, um, even after a decade of trying to solve that problem. So what we really need to do is rethink our answers to these problems. Um, I'm excited about this conversation and the ideas that it will generate. Um, I can't wait to share these with my colleagues who have all been invited to participate any way they want to. Um, as we move towards the fall bump, it is really important that collectively uh, we go into that process with a shared vision of where we're headed. Uh, and 
I just want to say thank you again so much for being here. And I also want to really appreciate Wyden and Kennedy, who's been a uh, partner with us in this effort uh, by donating uh, their expertise to help us with this campaign. And so I will stop there and I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Commissioner, um, can you define exactly what defund the police means? And if you reduce the number of officers, should citizens expect slow or no response when they call 911? It's Rosemary at KXL. Thank you, Rosemary. Um, let me say today, the community are getting uh, reasons for a lack of police doing the job that they've been hired to do. Recently, I heard that the uh, neighborhood response teams was cut. Um, I constantly get emails from community members saying, well, the police say they can't uh, investigate domestic violence cases because $15 million was cut from their budget. Um, they're now saying the neighborhood response team has to be cut because 15 million was cut from their budget. I call that hogwash. It is absolutely untrue. Uh, we, as you may remember, in June, we cut the gang violence reduction team that's now was called the gun, uh, the gun violence reduction team that used to be the gang enforcement team. We cut uh, the school resource officers, we cut transit police, and we took dollars that were being used uh, for um, uh, for uh, traffic police uh, and put it back into uh, the community. And those were the uh, dollars from the cannabis tax. Um, the Portland police is doing what they always do. When they don't get the resources they want, they cut programs that have actually been proven to have more success uh, than some of the other programs, as the, like the ones I mentioned that we cut. Um, so there's no reason why the management within Portland Police Bureau is making the decisions that they're making. And it certainly doesn't have to do with the $15 million cut. Does it concern you, though, that we have over 500 shootings in just a short period of time, way, way more than we've had in past years? It, yes, it does concern me greatly that we have an increase in shootings, just like every other urban community is suffering the same kind of repercussions. Data will show you and history will show you that anytime there's an economic collapse, violence goes up. Uh, we know that domestic violence calls are way, way, way up. We know child abuse calls are way up. And it shouldn't be a surprise to any of us that people have been isolated. People are economically insecure. Uh, the pandemic has kept people in a state of flux. And now we have a racial justice movement taking place that, that makes people nervous. Uh, so, I, yes, I'm concerned. But more police has never been the answer to solving gun violence. When we had a gang enforcement unit, we didn't stop gang activity. When we had a gun violence reduction team, we didn't stop guns from being on our street. So it's a, it's a misdirection to try to make the connection between uh, reimagining community safety and whether or not uh, shootings are going up. Thank you, Commissioner. And a reminder for folks um, who have a question, put that in the chat function and I will call you um, in the order I receive those chat functions. All right. I'm not seeing any questions. We're just so good, we answered them all. <laughs> okay, great. It looks like Jim Redden um, from the Tribune has a question. So Jim, if you wanna unmute yourself and ask the commissioner. Are you planning on making a proposal to change the police budget, cut the police budget during the fall bump process? I am, yes. What's it going to be? Uh, well, that's what we're working on. Um, I, I can't give you a number at the moment. Uh, that's why we're having good and deep conversations all across the city of Portland about what the community wants to see. All right. 
Thanks, Jim. Um, and the next question from Bryant. Uh, Bryant, would you like to just unmute yourself and ask the commissioner? Sure. Uh, hi, Joanne. This is Bryant, uh, morning reporter with KGW Channel 8. Uh, I was just curious, what other actions are you going to be taking in the near future to sort of carry out this plan and some of these ideas that you've had? Well, I mean, part of it is having these community engaged dialogues. Um, you may know that over the last couple of weeks, we've had several community meetings. This Saturday, I'm having a forum with youth of color to talk about what their vision is for community safety and what their vision is for the city of Portland. Um, uh, two weeks ago, I had a conversation with longtime um, leaders around police reform. Uh, combined, we had 150 years of working on police reform in the city of Portland. Um, in addition to that, I talked to some young activists uh, the week after, uh, a couple of days after that. Um, and so again, it's about, it's not really what I think, it's really engaging the community at a deeper level and getting those community voices um, incorporated into the policies that I will move forward. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Bryant. Do any other folks have any questions? This can be a short. Yeah, I asked another. This is Rosemary at KSL. Yeah, it looks like um, we haven't received any other questions. So yes, you can definitely ask a second question. Commissioner, how would you solve the problem of more than four months worth of riots? And I'm, I'm not talking about peaceful demonstrations. I'm talking about the destruction. Um, actually, we have not had four months of rioting. I will not buy into that, uh, that rhetoric. We had a riot one night. It was May 28th. And we've had a variety of violence, uh, most of it led by Portland police since then. Have there been people setting dumpster fires and garbage cans on fires and breaking windows? Yes. Uh, those are criminal acts uh, that should be prosecuted as a criminal act. Uh, but I do not buy into this theory that we've had riots every night. That's just simply not true. People are standing up. People are standing up because people want justice and they want equality and they are frustrated with the lack of action by their government. So if uh, Sarah Ayanaron is elected oh, sorry, mayor, we've got another question. sorry, we've got another question from Jim, so we'll get back to you, unless this is a clarifying question. All right, um, so uh, Jim, it looks like Jim has another question. Um, Jim, would you like to just unmute yourself and ask the commissioner? I was wondering whether any of Rethink Portland is aimed at coming up with proposals to change the form of government. And if so, is that outside the charter co uh, commission? Absolutely not. This, this uh, rethink Portland has nothing to do with the charter. As you know, we will have a charter review commission seated in January of 2021. Um, and that commission will have two years to talk to Portlanders through every corner of the city. Um, and that commission is truly independent from city council. It is not my job or role to tell them what to do and what to look at. If they choose to look at our form of government, they will do so. And let me just say, it is not our form of government that is dysfunctional. It's how we work in our form of government. As you know, I don't have the place bureau in my portfolio, but that does not stop me from working on, on reforms that the community has been demanding for decades. I think it's important to remember that um, I, I was elected in a form of government that we have, and if Portlanders want to change the form, they will make that case to the Charter Review Commission. Thanks, Jim. All right. Um... Before we go back, uh, do, does anyone else have any other questions?
All right. That's looking like maybe there we don't have any more questions. I just let someone else in. I guess someone was in the waiting room. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, um, I'm not seeing any more questions popping up on the Zoom. Um, I see so, Paige. Who was it that was trying to ask a question and we told her to wait? Oh, I yes. Uh, Rosemary, was that you who had a, a last question? Yes, I did. Um, yeah. I guess before, after listening to your response to me, what does justice look like in your mind and how would you achieve that um, with Sarah Ayanna Rome possibly as the new mayor? Well, let me just say that I will work with whoever shows up in January of next year um, and um, I will achieve it with the collective voice of the community, right? The community has been really clear. People want policing that happens in this community to happen the same way, whether you live in the Southwest Hills or whether you live on the street um, in uh, uh, downtown Portland. Uh, they want a compassionate police force that are there to help solve crimes, not there to um, uh, intimidate or harass people who are houseless, not to over police black and indigenous and other communities of color. We have, uh, we have audits that clearly show that there's a difference in policing depending upon who you are and where you live. And what the community wants is fairness and equity and how policing takes place in our community. And quite frankly, what we keep hearing from the community is they don't believe police are the solution to every social ill that we have. As you know, police aren't housing experts. They're not mental health experts. They're not experts on uh, social services. So we, we cannot continue to invest in a failed system that does not give us the outcomes that we need. Thank you. You're welcome. And that's why Portland Street Response, though it's been delayed, it's going to be 100 times better once it hits the street next year. As you know, Portland Street Response is a non-law enforcement response to 911 calls, um, and it will include a, a certified mental health professional. It will include a um, EMT slash firefighter, and it will include a peer support person. Um, these are the things that people on our streets have said will help them where they are. Um, none of them said that sending a police officer with a weapon and with mandates for behavior has helped them at all. And so shifting resources to proven community methods is, the, uh, is what my job is. And my job is to listen to the public and see what they want and then work with my colleagues to see how we can best implement it. All right. Thanks, Rosemary. Um, so I, I think it sounds like we don't have any other questions. Um, well, let me just say thank you so much. And don't be surprised when you start seeing the posters and the billboards showing up all over town about Rethink Portland, because this has to be a community driven effort. Um, my role is to facilitate these conversations and take the best ideas and put them into action. So again, thank you so much for being here today and stay tuned because I'm really excited about where we're headed. Have a great day. Thanks everyone. Thank you, bye-bye.